Welcome to the new Microsoft PowerPoint 2010. Just like the rest of the suite, there have been some changes with this product. Not a whole lot, and I've actually been quite pleased with some of the changes. Uh, some of it's been a long time coming. When you first open it up, you get the, uh, the typical title slide, so that really hasn't changed at all. Uh, that's no different. To insert additional slides uh, on the Home tab, you now have a, a new slide button. This allows you to insert different slides like title, title and content, which are the most common, um, section headers, to content, comparison, duplicate slides. Um, more importantly though, this is where you can import your slides from a Word file. You can also reuse slides from other presentations here. So if you want to import slides before we used to go to insert, now it's kind of buried within this new slide button. That way, if you're looking to borrow slides from other presentations, it's important that you remember that uh, this feature is found in New Slide. The layout can be reapplied to the slide, so if you don't like the layout that you have, you can actually uh, choose a completely different layout and uh, it will uh, change the uh, different things that you have on the slide. I can reset it to the original layout and you can now add uh, sections to PowerPoint presentations that uh, almost acts like bookmarks where you can jump to a particular section. If I insert a new slide, I'll use a, a, a title and content. It's uh, still very similar to previous versions where you uh, can add a title. So I'll add, uh, this is my video. And then I can add some, some text in here, or I have these different buttons that allow me to insert all kinds of different things. So I can insert a table, choose the number of columns and the number of rows, and it inserts the table. I'll just undo that. I can also insert a chart, and this is now quite intelligent. Now what they've done with inserting charts is when you click on insert chart, it actually, uh, once you make a decision here, it actually opens up Excel. It still draws the same goofy little chart, but uh, I can click into series and uh, put in my uh, my different series, January, all right, February, March, all that stuff. And then I can put in my different categories or different products. And when you're finished, all you have to do is just close Excel. When I click on the X, I can close Excel. There's my chart. I can still edit the data and I have a new set of tools at the top. You'll notice at the top I now have chart tools. Chart tools allow me to change the chart type so if I've made a different decision I can choose a, a, a different type of chart. I can save it as a template. My different chart layouts are here too. So I can choose a, a different layout and uh, it just lays it out a little bit differently. My styles are here, so I can apply different styles and you know, try different ones. See what they look like, different backgrounds. See what it looks like. Home is still home. New slide sections as I talked about, uh, but this is also how you change the text direction. I can align the text, top, middle, bottom of the section, and then uh, I have all my drawing tools. Uh, the drawing tools work uh, still very similar to Excel. Uh, the rest of the products where uh, once I, uh, I draw the shape, um, it then gives me a brand new set of tools. Now I'm actually quite glad this happened. You'll notice that it didn't switch to the drawing tools. This is um, a bit of a flaw with the, uh, with the product. Uh, I do find that uh, Sometimes, for whatever reason, um, it doesn't switch to the proper tabs. So you do have to pay attention up top here to see if there are any additional tools or additional options. I'll just switch to uh, my additional options here. So I'll go to Format. Then I can apply all kinds of different styles and uh, different effects and you know, put a shadow or reflection or glow underneath it. So some neat things that you can do. Depending on what you click on, you'll get your different tools back. So if I click on the chart, I get my chart tools back. If I click on the smart art, I get my smart art back. 
You can still right click on the right hand side here to, uh, to insert additional new slides. So I can insert a, a new slide here and add a, a title. I can insert pictures. Uh, that's you know no different than Word. It uh, still operates and works the exact same way. Uh, clip art is uh, identical to pictures. You get the exact same picture toolbar with both. But media has changed quite a bit. When I insert media clips, this is just a, a sample media clip that I have, and I'll insert it here. It's called Wildlife. I'll take a second to insert. Once I insert it though, I have all these different video styles that I can apply to it. It basically changes the frame. Now, just as a side note, if you are going to do something like this, um, make sure that you test it on the, uh, the laptop that you have or the desktop that you have. Um, especially some of the, uh, the intense ones. Um, these require quite a bit of uh, RAM, quite a bit of processing power to, to make it you know, look this way and to frame it this way. So always test the video out before you actually present. But uh, you got lots of you know, neat little frames and things that you can use so that uh, if I play the video here, it looks pretty neat. I get a typical frame around it so I can, uh, you know, I can rotate it even further and uh, do different things to it. You can apply different color corrections to it. So I can change the brightness and the contrast. I can recolor it with different tones. You can select the, uh, the poster frame. So I can use the, uh, the current frame as the poster frame, which means that it's the default or the image that shows up first uh, when you play the video. Um, currently it, it, it's blank, it's black but uh, I could use this, the current frame, as the poster frame uh, and then that's the frame that, uh, that constantly shows up all the time and as you can see it, it doesn't switch to a black frame now that I'm applying all these different effects. That's the poster frame. Here's the corrections, same thing. I can reset the design, I can reset it and resize it, apply different effects. Um, I can choose different video shapes, you know, have it uh, like a heart or a lightning bolt, uh, you know, there's all kinds of little uh, odd things that you can do. And then uh, again, I have my video effects, which are very similar to picture effects, beveling, soft edges, glowing, uh, again, there's, there's a lot of things in there. Here's the part that I really wanted to show you though, the playback. When I go to playback, I can choose play, I can also add different bookmarks uh, within the uh, within the video. Uh, I can remove bookmarks, but basically what the bookmark allows me to do is it allows me to jump to different parts of the video and add different bookmarks so that I can jump to different parts and it, it, it's a, a clickable thing that uh, I can choose. Rather than scrolling back and forth through the video, you know, I, I can take it to different spots um, just just by being able to click on these, uh, these bookmarks and very quickly being able to, to jump to these different parts of the video. You can now trim the video. So I can trim it at the front, trim it at the back, so I can decide exactly how much of the video to, to, uh, to work with and to, uh, to play. Uh, I also have different video effects now that allow me to fade the video in, fade the video out. Um, this is interesting. I, I can change the, the volume of the video I can play the video at full screen. I can hide the video while we don't play it. I can also loop it until it's stopped. And I can rewind it so it goes back to that uh, poster frame that uh, we took a look at before. Audio is very similar. When you insert audio, uh, you have a lot of the same features now. Being able to fade in, fade out, and uh, trim that audio, as well as being able to, uh, uh, to play with it from a... Uh, uh, pretty much any uh, any device. And what I mean by that is if you go to file now, before in file you didn't have as many options as, as what you do now. See if I go to save and send, uh, there's a lot of different ways that I can send this to people. I can send it as an attachment, I can send it as a PDF, so it becomes much more universal. I can change the file type 
and there's many different file types that I now have. Worst case scenario, I can save it as a picture. Each slide is saved as a picture, and uh, the PNG that's here uh, it would be a, a professional print quality. But I can create uh, PDFs. Uh, I can even create a video and uh, decide exactly um, what the quality of the video is. So here it's uh, computer HD displays, but I can change it you know, for portable devices, the internet. So uh, literally, n no matter what type of, um, uh, what, what type of uh, feature or uh, you know, what type of uh, uh, device the person has, they, uh, they can actually save this now, which is kind of nice. Pack and Go is still here. So they call it package for CD, and uh, this is where you uh, you create your handouts as well. But uh, for the most part, um, PowerPoint still pretty much works the same. Uh, like I said, you know you got insert pictures and and all the uh, the different things uh, like screenshots. Uh, photo album uh, has always been there, but uh, now it's front and center, and I can insert different things like text boxes and uh, headers and footers, um, word art. Uh, date, time, slide numbers, equations, videos, audio. I can even embed Flash, but that's because I have uh, Flash Professional installed. And uh, that is PowerPoint 2010.